This is Pastor Wilbur Allen III, and this is the All Saints Bible Study, where the Word of God is alive with power. If you would, please join me in a word of prayer. Our God, our Father, it is through you we move and we have our being. It is our earnest prayer that as we approach your Word, that we are able to glean the true intent of the Scripture according to your will. Therefore, we are empowered to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. For this we pray in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Well, it's Thursday, and that means it's time to explore the word of God. And so today we want to go to the book of Jonah. Jonah is one of the minor prophets, and it's a very a portion, interesting portion of scripture that we want to explore today. It is in Jonah, the first chapter. I'm going to read just three verses, verses 15 through 17. So they took up Jonah, they look up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Interesting, interesting uh, portion of Scripture. And as we know, uh, this, this portion of Scripture is included in the overall story of Jonah, where God uh, sends forth the charge for him to go to Nineveh and to preach to the people of Nineveh. However, Jonah had his reasons as to why he did not want to go to Nineveh and preach what thus saith the Lord. And of course, the Bible details that Jonah went in the opposite direction to a city called Tarshish. The opposite direction, all the way Tarshish is located on the coast or was located on the coast of Spain. And so I want to explore two things. Number one, why Jonah rebelled against God. And number two, the fish. <laughs> Jonah, number one, he rebels. And then the other essential element in this portion of scripture is the fish. Number one, Jonah had his reasons. He had nationalistic reasons. He had justification as to what determine his desires, determine his reaction to God's call. Consequently, Jonah being called of God, being a prophet of God. So the Bible says the Lord prepared a fish. This was not any, any typical fish. It was a great fish in which it was able to swallow Jonah, Jonah being in the belly of a fish. So that means the digestive processes that the fish typically had, God ceased them so that Jonah would come to humble himself and submit to the ultimate will of God. And of course, when he prays the prayer of forgiveness, the Bible says that the, that the fish spewed him upon the shore. And then the word comes to him again. This time, he straightway goes to Nineveh. So he had these issues. He had, he had desires that would, did, not, uh, were not, did not jive with what God wanted him to do. Secondly, there, as I said, there was the fish. I, interesting enough, I sense a parallel to Jonah's reaction and how God reacted to Jonah's decision. So today we have, we have the church is struggling with its own desires, its own wants, which are not or does not jive with the will of God. I hasten to say there's a dreadful uh, uh, theology that is, uh, that is it's, it's, uh, it's very much included in, it's one of the primary tenets of American contemporary Christianity. And that is called prosperity gospel. It, it is a gospel that allows the believer to revel or to uh, be attracted 
where it's a hybrid of faith and some of the values of our 21st century American culture. One of them is narcissism. Another is materialism. There's a whole host of issues. And so it allows the believer to embrace some of the beliefs of this culture. And so now the word of God, Jesus sends forth the great commission. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So when you peel back the layers of prosperity gospel, it does not embrace the great commission that Jesus gave to his church. Yes, the church belongs to Jesus. And so the church is in a position now in this country where it wants to embrace our own desires, embrace our own lust, embrace our own personal views. And it's popular in this country, but yet the charge that Jesus put forth, it continues to persist during this dispensation of grace. And so, yes, just as Jonah had a fish, we as believers in America should be concerned that maybe the Lord might just have a fish for us. Some might even say that COVID was that type uh, of, of reaction, a divine reaction placed upon the church. And so we must look to Jonah and see the parallels of Jonah compared to each and every one of us today. And I just want to say that each and every one of us, each, each and every one of us, we are given the charge to proclaim the gospel. And I want to share something with you that the Lord recently uh, gave me. As a matter of fact, it was earlier today. The, the, I believe this is a time where the church must be on the offensive, not defensive or even reactionary, but the church must be on the offensive for the gospel. We're living in a very aggressive culture, a very seductive culture. Now, Nineveh had its, Nineveh had its devices. Nineveh, Nineveh was the most powerful country, in the most powerful or the largest city in the world at that time. It was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. But Nineveh was wicked. And so now we must come to the point that the God wants the church just as he called Jonah to go and to preach in Nineveh, we must go on the offensive, proclaim the gospel with an aggression. And this is what Jonah did not want to do. And so we have to understand, take a look at our culture. The culture is crying out for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whether the culture is not aware of it or not, it the good news of Jesus Christ must be proclaimed in a myriad of ways by all believers. God has a way of placing us in different different circumstances, and then we proclaim it all different ways based upon our calling, because the church does not want to have an encounter with the fish. Now let me add with let me add something to this. This 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 story of Jonah is almost like a mathematical equation. You know, you have Jonah plus rebellion equals the fish. <laughs> That's it. Jonah plus disobedience against God equals fish. Just as 1 plus 1 equals two, Jonah plus his disobedience equals an encounter with the fish. And so the church must be faithful to the charge that God has given us. So I want to submit to you, there is a parallel between Jonah and the fish. 
and the charge that the church has today and the culture in which we are to proclaim the gospel. And now it's time, it's time for the offense to come onto the field. Yes, like Pat Mahomes leads the uh, Kansas City Chiefs and this, it's a dynamic offensive offense. They have great plays, great passes. And so we must be likewise the Kansas City Chiefs. We must come to the line of scrimmage and be aggressive, throw passes downfield, have great running game so that we can proclaim the, the, that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and that his blood still has power. It is time for the offense. It is time for the church <laughs> to gather its offensive line. It's time for the church to gather its running backs. See, all these positions, they all have different jobs, different callings. The quarterback has a call. The offensive line has a call. The receivers, they have a call. It's time for the offense to come together and score touchdowns. Yes, touchdowns. <laughs> touchdowns for Jesus. And so we must understand, accept the reality that there is this parallel. And I do not want to experience or have a fish encounter. And yes, God, <laughs> he will prepare a fish. So in my closing, let us be faithful. Let us be on the offense. Look to the story of Jonah and how God has the sovereign authority to call any of us to put forth the charge. Let us be like Noah. We read the story of Noah. God gives him something audacious to do, but Noah is obedient. And in that Noah, his family, they were saved from the judgment of God. See, fish can be judgment. In Jonah's case, it was a time of deliverance, a time of humbling himself before God. So let us, let us move forward according, yes, according to the will of God. I pray that you were blessed by that and maybe you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. Pray this prayer with me. Put your hand on your handheld device, your laptop, even your iPad. Let's pray this together. Lord, I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And yes, I believe that God the Father raised you from the grave. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me a new creature. Give me a new path. I want to walk according to your will. And now, oh God, I receive, I am ready to receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit into me. Send your Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. This I pray in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. So I pray that you were encouraged by that. Let us, let the church be in the offense for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessings to you.